for no reason at all, lots of us have been expanding our tabletop role-playing game horizons lately and looking at new and different games. Last video, we talked about a bunch of games with free versions you should definitely check out, but in this one, we're going to look to the future, and I'm going to take you on a quick rundown of five new non-D&D games that I am really looking forward to and may soon be among your favorites. Shadow Dark is a new game by Kelsey Dion at Arcane Press, and I've gushed about her minimalist game design aesthetics before when we talked about her adventure writing for 5e. That stripped down laser focus on exactly what's important is on full display in what we've seen so far in the free quick start guides. There are two, one for players, one for game masters, and you can just go grab them right now. Did I mention that they're free to get a sense of Shadow Dark? Each is 68 pages and already developed enough to power your home game. The player's book gives us the game. It is rules light, old school style dungeon delving with some modern twists. It's inventory based. A torch lasts one hour of real time. At zero AP, you are dead. In 1d4 plus con rounds, no saves. As you gain XP and level up, you gain new titles depending on your class and your alignment. The system uses advantage and disadvantage and luck tokens that look similar to inspiration, but you know, they might actually end up getting used. Dark vision is gone and we are not counting squares. Distance is measured as close, near, and far. We're rolling to cast spells and bad things can happen if you crit fail. On the GM side, we're getting some solid advice. Tables, 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 and you know I love a good table. And we get an introductory adventure, Lost Citadel of the Scarlet Minotaur. Kelsey walks through it on her channel. I'll link to that video and these PDFs in the description so you can pick it up and play right now. I'm also linking the freshly kicked off Kickstarter for the full game launched on February 28th. There's also a pretty cool trailer on there, so watch it and get psyched for Shadow Dark. Now, the next stop on our tour is something I've been pumped up about for a while now. Old Gods of Appalachia is actually a horror anthology podcast turned TTRPG powered by Monty Cook's cipher system and i cannot wait for it to ship i've been recommending this podcast to anyone who likes stories and spends time listening to anything for like a couple years now it is the best and even if you pick up none of the games in this video give old gods a listen the flavor people the flavor like hot chicken on the cat head biscuit with a drizzle of honey from your neighbor's bees look y'all I'm a New York boy, born and raised, but I spent six months hiking the Appalachian Trail, listening to those first two Lord Huron albums, sleeping in the woods alone at night. I've seen and been seen by black bears and mountain lions. I was eye to eye to eye to eye to eye with a spider the size of my hand while I was using a privy, and once I almost stepped on a rattlesnake, and he let me know. I've heard grouse starting up like a motor, and barred owls and coyotes laughing like maniacs in the night, and been woken by the symphony of birds at dawn, and I will never forget the sound of loons calling across mountain lakes to one another like wolf ghosts or long-lost lovers. I lived a couple years outside of Asheville, North Carolina, the foothills of the Blue Ridge and the shadow of the Smoky Mountains. I'm back on my side of the Mason-Dixon now, and making my home in the largest city in Appalachia, still the heart of coal country where we're kicking off the rust planting pawpaws in the backyard, all of that to say, I am clearly partial here, but there's something special about Appalachia and mixing all the haints and cryptids that we're pretty sure are out there with the uh, eldritch horrors that we hope or not that would, would explain some things, and you get a world that I hope I'm brave enough or foolish enough to explore. So yeah, I'm excited for Old Gods of Appalachia, and you should be too, family. Links to the game and the podcast down below. And now for something completely different. Let's talk about Monty Python's co-curricular medieval reenactment program. Now, I'm going to be honest. I'm always a little suspicious of these licensed works from big IPs. And I really don't know if this game is going to be any good, but I am confident that I will enjoy reading through it one day. And if you work quotes from the Holy Grail and Flying Circus into casual conversation, let alone game night, then I bet you will too. Let me just read this from their Kickstarter. Though the program is set in medieval England, it draws upon Monty Python's entire catalog to render up an interactive world full of their unique characters, creations, and sensibilities. 
All of this may be brought to bear for a long-term campaigning or a single evening of educational advancement. Participants need not be familiar with Monty Python's work in order to participate, nor is role-playing game experience required. The latter would be entirely useless, as it is emphatically not a role-playing game, and if you do have extensive experience with such things, you are likely too silly a person to participate in this program and should stop reading immediately. Do the kids know about Monty Python? Let me know in the comments, please. It raised almost two million on Kickstarter, so I guess people still know about them. You can join all of those backers for the pre-order still link in the description. Now, I know I talked about Led Zeppelin last time, but I'm doing it again because in the heart of the OGL mess a few weeks ago, and it feels like months or years ago, I was blasting No Quarter to get myself out of a funk inspired by Project Black Flag's announcement from Cobalt Press. I've always had a soft spot for Cobalt Press, in part because, frankly, I love Cobalts, but recently I started running their Scarlet Citadel campaign and reaching for their their creature codex and tomb of beasts and pulling spells from their deep magic and I gotta say my players and I are having a blast. Those kobolds make great stuff and I have high hopes for the game that they're cooking up. I think if they translate their Midgard setting and current roster of offerings to their new core rules they will really be off to a big head start in the coming wave of new systems we might end up calling the 5e OSR or OGL Diaspora. I don't know we'll workshop it. Let me know if you have any ideas for that one. Anyway, playtest material has begun to be released. I'm going to include a link below. Of course, they're doing some interesting things right out of the gate with character creation. I especially like how they are separating out genetics and culture with lineage and heritage. Another first impression is it seems power creep is in full effect for the player characters, which I've got mixed feelings about, honestly. But based on experience, I believe Cobalt Press will also be turning up the monster side of the equation. So, you know, all things in balance. My buddy Kelf has done a really thorough breakdown and like an insightful comparison to 5e. So if you want a deep dive on that first playtest doc, I'm linking to his stream down below as well. Also, I gotta say, I love that set. Another shop that I've been a fan of for a while now is throwing their hat in the ring and making their own system, inevitably, MCDM, maybe you've heard of them. Everybody talking games on YouTube likely owes a debt to Matt Colville, and he definitely helped me get like the skills and confidence I needed to take the leap behind the Dungeon Master screen when I first started. The workshop watches from the first issues of Arcadia became a big part of my last campaign, two campaigns ago, uh, and I just ran that Giants Rampage scenario from Flea Mortals for some old friends the other night, and whew, it was a great time. We don't know much about the new system yet, but I do believe we are going to get a successor series to running the game, designing the game. And I am always a sucker for that, like, inside baseball kind of talk and shop stuff, especially from an insightful guy like Colville. The first one, or maybe better said the prequel, just went up on YouTube, link below of course. We know from that that we're getting a game that's focused on fighting monsters and heroic fantasy settings. Surprise, surprise. And we also learn that what we know, Matt is good at pitching stuff. I'm excited to see where this all goes. Another YouTuber worth watching, in part because he's cooking up a new system himself, is The Dungeon Coach. Alan's enthusiasm and energy are infectious. And while it turns out making YouTube videos really cuts into your watching YouTube videos time, I always get a lot of joy out of what he's putting out there. And DC's whole thing is cooking up homebrew rules. He published 200 plus pages of 5e hacks for every occasion in his Alcander's Almanac of All Things. I really like the modularity he makes in there, the encouragement to test out different bits and pieces and adjust things to make the game your own. If he brings that same spirit to his new game, oof, oh boy, I'm excited to see it. All right, so that's six. Were you counting? And I only promised you five, but I also promised to over deliver. So here's our double secret bonus. This one isn't a new game exactly so much as new to be. I've been eyeing it from the sidelines for a while now and for reasons we're totally not gonna get into I recently decided it was time to check out the latest edition of Pathfinder Turns out everyone else decided to pick up 2E at the same time as well My buddy Phil at my friendly local game shop was all sold out and Amazon even Paizo themselves are still out of the physical core rule books It's a little inconvenient for me, but I am super happy for them and I 
did manage to get my hands on this. And I'm thinking of making a video about it. Maybe do a quick unboxing, then perhaps like a playlist of Game Master Prep for the adventure inside. I know a lot of you found me from my other starter set videos. Let me know in the comments if you are interested in a series walking you through this one. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss it. In the meantime, it's support from my patrons that keep me going. Big thank yous to everyone helping keep the lights on over at Patreon. If you are interested in five more games you could get your hands on right now, no waiting for free, free, that's right, free, check this video out. Until next time, be kind, have fun, and thank you so much for watching.